we're going to talk about the best diet for diabetics, type 1s, type 2s, pre-diabetics, and really any other types out there. This diet can really help you get your blood sugars under control, lose weight, and avoid any future diabetes complications. And it's been proven to work. There are hundreds of testimonials from type 2 diabetics and pre-diabetics who completely reversed their diabetes. Even us type 1s might reduce the amount of insulin we need, and we can significantly reduce our HbA1c levels. We can get them to 6% or even lower in the long term. So what is this magical diet? all about. The funny thing is there actually seems to be not only one best diet, there seem to be two completely different diets, two completely different approaches. They both work and each of these two approaches has quite a big number of proponents who claim that only their way is the best way to master your diabetes, the ultimate diabetes solution. The first approach is low carb aka keto diet. On a low carb diet you eat lots of meat, non-starchy vegetables, eggs and cheeses and you avoid carby foods like rice potatoes or bread. Carbohydrates will drive glucose high and if you want to keep it under control you just have to cut the carbs. The second approach is a low fat plant-based diet. On this diet you eat lots of fruits, legumes, potatoes, all kinds of veggies. You completely avoid any kind of ingredients that come from animals. No meat, no eggs, no cheese. So here I am today, 15 years later from that initial diagnosis. I eat more than 700 grams of carbohydrate on a daily basis and my A1C value is between 5.6 and 6.0. These two diets sound like complete opposites, don't they? And maybe that's why both of them have very strong, almost cut-like following. If someone is in the low-carb camp, they will spend hours convincing you that you should eat high fat, high protein meals and you should never touch carbohydrates again. And if someone is high carb plant based, they will be telling you to avoid animal products completely and don't eat a lot of fats. I would love to know if you are in any of those two camps. If you are, just hit that like button or let me know in the comments below. Now another funny thing is that none of these diets is what diabetics are recommended when they are first diagnosed. Most of us are told to eat balanced diet, which basically means a bit of everything. So how come these alternative diets are so effective and the people who follow them reach such great results? How is that possible? Well, we need to explore these diets a bit more to fully understand it. And let's start with the low carb. The main argument for the low carb diet is that when you eat carbs, they simply spike your blood sugar much faster than fat and protein. Cutting carbs solves that problem. When you eat low carb, you don't get more than 10% of your calorie intake from carbohydrates. And that's why it immediately gets much easier to keep those blood sugars under control. After a few days of low carb diet, your body gets into ketosis and it starts burning fat because it simply doesn't get enough energy from carbs. And so you should also start losing weight pretty quickly on a low carb diet, as long as you don't overeat. Most people on a low carb diet are able to eliminate blood sugar spikes completely and significantly reduce their HbA1c very fast. The main argument for the low fat plant based diet is not the immediately better and more stable blood sugars. It's all about insulin resistance. Because the more fat your body accumulates in your body cells, the more insulin resistant you are. Your body just can't use insulin effectively to lower your blood sugars because it's clogged with all that fat in your cells. That's why low fat plant based diet promotes eating whole foods with high carbohydrates content and low fat content. With a plant based diet you should also see significant weight loss especially when you combine it with exercise. And you should achieve better HbA1c levels as your insulin sensitivity improves. The second argument for low fat plant based diet is that people who follow it report better energy levels compared to the periods of time when they were on a low carb diet. And the third argument is that a low fat plant based diet is more sustainable in the long term. Your bad cholesterol levels should significantly improve on a plant based diet. And to be honest with you, it's very challenging to follow a low carb diet in the long term. I simply start craving things like bread, potatoes and rice after some time in a low carb state. But it's definitely not impossible to resist. My big inspiration and the biggest proponent of a low carb diet who is well known is Dr. Bernstein. He's a type 1 diabetic diagnosed at the age of 12 and he's now 88 years old. And even in his age he's staying perfectly healthy, still working at his diabetes clinic and living a full life with 
type 1 diabetes at 88 years old after he's been a type 1 diabetic for 76 years. He eats no more than 30 grams of carbs a day, 6 grams for breakfast, 12 grams for lunch, and 12 grams for dinner every day. The biggest proponent of a low-fat, plant-based diet is another type 1 diabetic, Dr. Cyrus Kambata, and his results also speak for themselves. So here I am today, 15 years later from that initial diagnosis of 2002. I've reduced my insulin use by 40%. I eat more than 700 grams of carbohydrate on a daily basis. And my A1C values, which is a three-month marker of your average blood glucose, is between 5.6 and 6.0. And that's right in the target range where I want to keep it. Guys, before I share my thoughts on which of these two diets is better, I just want to point you to two great books that I'm currently reading, where you can get much more information about each of these approaches. The first the first book is Diabetes Solution by Dr. Bernstein, where you will learn about a low-carb approach. And Mastering Diabetes from Dr. Cyrus is the second one, and there you will learn about the low-fat approach. And if you want to check out one of these books completely for free, go to audibletrial.com slash Tom, I will put the link in the description. If you sign up for a free trial, you can get one audiobook completely for free. So what do I think about these two diets? Well, they both seem to work because there is many people who follow one or the other and improve improve their A1C levels, they feel better and they lose weight. But I see some problems with both of these diets actually. With a high carb diet, your blood sugar will spike after meal, you will need more insulin and it will be more challenging to keep your blood sugar in range, especially at the beginning. You might get good A1C in the long term, but you need to keep in mind that it's not only about HbA1c, it's also about glucose variability, which will go up. You will have more up and downs as you eat more carbs carbs spike glucose. That's what it is. And you don't want your blood sugars going up and down all the time. You especially don't want those huge blood sugar spikes after meal. These can hurt you. With a low carb diet you will get more stable blood sugars, lower H1C and you will need less insulin very quickly. All three will happen very quickly. And that all sounds great but you will probably also feel weak during the first week. You might even feel like you have a flu. It also gets challenging in the long term if you eat low carb. If you like me you will just start craving bread at some point, like desperately. And if you quit low carb diet and start eating carbs again, you will need way more insulin. If you're on a low carb diet, you also need to watch the kinds of fat that you eat. If you eat a steak every day, it's probably not good for you because there is a lot of saturated fats in some of those meals. So both of these diets seem to be controversial, but I want to give them a try. I want to give each of them a try in the long term, at least 30 days of each. And once I'm done with that experiment, I will definitely share the results with you on my channel. By the way, if you like my content and if you want to learn more or just support me, join my Patreon community where you can message me directly, we can exchange messages and you can even book a coaching session with me. Links are in the video description. The thing is, if you really want to master your diabetes, you need to be starting your day with good blood sugars. So if your morning blood sugars are too high, don't ignore this video where I share with you six tips how to avoid high morning blood sugars. So Click it and watch it next. I will see you there. Ciao.